This is a pretty brief part, I believe. Uh, <clears throat> an update from where we left off in the last part. This is to implement the um, evaluator of the virtual machine. So we got this factorial function here. And what I've done is like I've added a, a, a reference implementation just to make sure that things works um, in just C. And then down here where we were running our pro program yesterday, uh, I've added a printout from just running the, uh, the reference implementation, which you know my compiler will produce code for with the same inputs. Uh, and then uh, we just do what we did yesterday and uh, evaluate the virtual machine. Okay. So I found a bug yesterday, <laughs> I was running this and I got into an infinite loop. So this is the output from uh, from running the program. So I just got into infinite loop and I was like, what is going on? Did I get this wrong? Since I just kind of dried code this, so to speak, right? I didn't actually know if this was um, this was the correct implementation. And I was like, how do I even try this? So I tossed this together, looked at the code that um, was generated from uh, uh, by my compiler, which looked sort of like this. Lift it over, show some debugging from yesterday. Um, so this is kind of what my compiler would generate for for the C function. Um, and then I just stepped through it in my head, like what would happen, right? If, you know, I gave it an input of, of three, I was like, what the hell, this is, you know, this is what I'm doing here, what's, what's going on? Um, and it turned out that down here, I just had a typo, I just had a zero there, uh, where we, it would subtract from raised to zero instead of raised to one. Um, so this this was still correct, but this this was not. Um, and yeah, so once you just fixed that little mistake, it actually worked. And uh, the evaluators, this, first up, this is just a little function, just a development utility. This is the thing that prints out these numbers. If we just remove this and run it, you'll see that there's no output, but the result from the computation is still correct. Okay, so this is just this sort of printout. So this is helpful to debug. What this shows is the state of the first six registers um, before an instruction. So when we start this program, do, 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 down here, right? We set up our registers and we set up the first register, which is the first argument to the number three. So that's what we're seeing here is zero, it's number three, the rest of them is zero, which is, should probably just do this just to, just to make that expected. So this this means that the compiler will is zero, all of these values of this array, rather than in this case, it's sort of like YOLO, you might get some random bytes. And for debugging purposes, actually, it might just be, it might be more interesting to just do this. Uh, Is that? Oh no, that's not gonna work, of course. Series special. So we get memset or something like that. That might actually be uh, better. Um, so let's set it to this size of the array. So now these are all gonna be huge values, so that's gonna be a problem, but uh, oh yeah, my print function does not handle that. Okay, let's just undo what I was, what I was doing here and do this zero them out for now uh, and get sidetracked. Okay, so this, this is the state of the registers. Boop, boop, boop. And then this is just a printout of the instruction that we're running. So calling this format function that we've all already written, it's in this uh, uh, formatting file. Um, this, this little chunk of code used to be just in here, it's broke that out to a separate function uh, so that we can print just instruction by instruction instead of a whole program. And then it just prints it out. And then we see, so state of registers before the instruction, the instructions we run. And then here, subsequently, we have the state of the registers after the instruction is, is executed, right? And then we have next instruction and so on. So we see that uh, we're copying the value of zero, uh, register zero into register one. And yes, we have now three here in both places. And the next thing we do is that we load the constant one into register zero. And now, yes, 
wrist zero plus one. Uh, the next swing we do, uh, we will conditionally do a jump here if register one is zero, but it is not. So this does nothing, this just continues. So we just continue. Uh, the next thing we multiply register zero, at register one and, and zero, and store that in register zero. Um, and since multiplying one by three is the same, there's, uh, there's really no difference here. But indeed, it did change the registers, at least theoretically. Next thing, we just subtract one from register the value in register one, and then we store that to re register one. This is where I had a bug, where I had register zero over here. Um, and uh, so now that we've subtracted, let's see. Yeah, so we've multiplied one by three, right? So that meant we just get three, essentially copying. And that after we've subtracted one, we have two here now. And uh, um, register one here in our implementation. Let me let me scroll that up here. Function. Um, register one is our accumulator. That is the that is the uh, starts with the input argument, and we're gonna keep subtracting that until it's zero, and then we're done. The function is done when n is zero, and we just subtract about one for every loop. So that's what, what this one is doing here. And then we, we uh, this is the, the final like instruction here in the program. Then we check if um, the value in register one is not zero. And if it is, we do a jump. And in this case, register one is not zero. So this will do a jump. And we do a jump three instructions back. So that just means, if we look at the the implementation of this here. So here we have this instruction, right? So if the value of the register, uh, the register that we're naming is not zero, then you just alter the program counter by this value, so minus three. And that means that once we get down here, right, and we're gonna rewind the program counter three, that means that we're gonna keep, go back and execute this one more time. And that's what happens, so we see here that, that these instructions here oops, are repeated three times, right? So it happens here again, and the tests is raised to one zero. No, it's not. And it jumps back and it does this one more time. And then it says, is register is to one, is that zero? And yes, it is, and the function is complete, and we return. And the return value we've, uh, uh, we've multiplied, so this is the register zero, so this is the result of the factorial function. Um, so up here doesn't have the, the, the correct value. We initialize it here. Uh, and, you know, we see for, you know, the, um, yeah, I guess for input three. Yeah. So if argument zero is three, I guess that's how we can think about it. When, when this is three, like we, we we're, you know, going up like this. Anyhow, I shouldn't. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, there's a better way to explain it, but um, yeah, so that's that. It works, uh, and it's you know, it's a reasonably compact and and pleasant sort of debugging experience. <laughs> I got to um, uh, got to scratch my head a little bit about about that yesterday. Uh, so so that's it for this update. I just want to show you that it works again. You know, all of this code is on GitHub. If it hasn't occurred to you yet. Um, you could follow along with us if you wanted to. You can, you know, grab a, a copy of the code and you can sort of uh, tinker along here or just do your own kind of thing and check in sometimes or, you know, just just watch it for the fun of it. Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, probably a little is SMD parser to be able to write this kind of code instead of this. Um, up to that point, and, and probably during that point, uh, adding more instructions will be something that we'll do. So right now the, the instruction, the set of instructions here is, is very small, right? And actually some of these are not being used. Um, they uh, should be tested, not that they're very complicated. I mean, this is the entire implementation of the virtual machine right now. It's very small. 
and this is what we looked at. If you're curious how we got to this, look at um, uh, part number four of this series. Uh, one thing that one thing I should mention that we talked about in part number four, or I talked about in part number four, was uh, the the tail call table approach that we were trying out. So we were trying out three approaches. We were trying out um, a switch statement, which we ended up using, a, a label jump table approach, which turns out to essentially be slightly worse code or roughly the same code as switch statement for um, for more effort. And then the third approach we tried was to use um, um, functions with, with tail call optimization to get sort of a CSP style thing. And we noticed when we um, ran that through the compiler to to ask it to give us what the the assembly would be for the target machine, the x86 in this case, it inserted a lot of uh, stack manipulation code uh, and the prologue and epilogue of each of these functions, which sort of has a, uh, uh, it's, it makes it messy, would, you know, eventually when performance get becomes a, you know, um, concern it, it might be a challenge anyhow it just didn't feel right and i was i was looking that up a little bit and, and uh, doing some research about that and those things i guess it would be nice if i had a copy of that so i can show you what it was but essentially you can you can go back and look at at, at par four if you want to have a look at the specifics but essentially at the the beginning of each function it would do something like uh, uh push 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 the, uh, the stack pointer to maybe this stack base pointer. I can't remember what it's called, x86. And then it would like, you know, it would increase the stack pointer. Actually, it's like the frame pointer. So that's the point, right? So it would store the frame pointer at uh, the current stack pointer. It will like increment like the stack pointer. And then, you know, we have the actual code and then it would be do the opposite. So it would restore the frame pointer from, um, so it would, it would sort of, um, Decrement the, it really commit the stack pointer, um, and it turns out that if you call, if you uh, issue, what is it? F omit um, frame pointer, maybe frame pointer. So you can give this both GCC and client accepts this, then it won't generate this unless it, it you know, unless the function actually uses the stack. Um, and this, the frame pointer is used for debugging. Um, it allows, and in, in some languages like C++ that has stack unwinding and stuff like that, it's, I think it's also used for that. At least I know it is on Windows. Um, and so, you know, you could you could set this, and the code generator would be much leaner. Actually, like it would be equivalent to the code of um, roughly equivalent to the code of the switch statement, which is super cool with with tail calls. But uh, as 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 far as I understand it, this is a entire object or or nothing deal. So you would have to enable this for an entire source file. Uh, so there's a little bit of a ergonomic cost there to uh, to doing that, but I thought I just mentioned that, that there is there is a way to get rid of that stuff that we saw. Um, so, yeah. Cool. That's it. Uh, oh, yeah. One, one more thing. <laughs> I've started just doing a little thinking around uh, how constants could be represented in the actual program. It's a little tricky since the, the instruction coding that we have looks like this. Um, has a fixed size and the the address space is you know um, large even on a 32-bit machine it would be much larger than even the biggest possible slot which is 24 bits and in the case of like loading a constant we we really have just 19 bits to deal with since we need a target register number and 19 bits doesn't give us much it gives us about 500 kilobyte of uh, the addressable uh, space if we adjust things in bytes um, so that that is a challenge since you you might want to have more than 500 kilobyte of constants like imagine that you would embed I don't know a little um, a little database some images or something like that you, you might scratch up on against those 500k um, 
So you yeah, started doing a little bit of thinking. This file is in the source repository if you want to have a look at it. I just posted it to the, the Twitter thread, which is linked in the in the videos and on the if you're watching this on the web page, it's up at the top of the web page. Yeah, it's it's an interesting, it's a really interesting problem. How to how to squish these together. I was thinking about at least three different things. I think that there's a there's a fourth there now. Um, so one is just to say, you know, that's just the limit of this thing. I mean, it is, um, it is not, I'm not hoping to use this for any industry strength, like huge things, you know, I'm gonna use this for, for smaller programs. So this could be okay. Um, and for large human distance stuff, you might be able to sort of just load those from a separate file. Um, could use some sort of fancy compression I tried, I tried just playing with some of them in my head yesterday, but I don't know. It's, uh, I don't think that there's, a, there, it's just like weird uh, trade-offs. There might be, so this option is a possibility like to, instead of using the, um, uh, the target register, right? Where you say, you know, load a constant into register, whatever. Could you just say load a constant? At address and then 24 bits is probably enough it'll give us 2 megabytes 16 megabytes of addressable space which is probably going to be enough um, but then the register must be implicit right and then we have to dedicate a register that like you know now there, there will be implicit um, sort of effects or side effects that might not be apparent right so so far all of our instructions uh, name a register so they never clubber um, it's, that's, I know that's a weird, that's a weird name. It's, um, clubber essentially, it, it doesn't taint or override any registers unless you explicitly mention them, which is kind of nice. So if you look at the, um, a little program like, like that we have here, uh, you will know that like a register that's on the left side here is going to be, uh, or, or depends on this one, but like. You know, this is the only one that will be affected if any of the registers, right? So that's kind of a nice property. You can look at this, you know, which registers are going to be uh, clubbered, uh, aka sort of, you know, uh, smashed or edited. Um, and adding something like an implicit register would remove that. And now you have to be like, you know, you have to, you have to watch for these little kind of, um, uh, you know, tricky things. I was going to, I was going to, um, so yeah, that's a possibility that also has a trick trade off. The fourth one is to use a uh, table, like a lookup table address, uh, constants by, uh, index. So it could look something like this, where there is a, you know, here's like all the, the constant data. So there will be, you know, this, just compact as possible, you know, chunk of uh, chunk of data. And then there is essentially is a level of interaction in between. <laughs> I guess like all problems in computer science can be solved by a level of interaction, uh, where each constant in a function or a program has like just an entry in this table. And I guess this would be, you know, the use size or something like that. It doesn't really matter what this is. Uh, this is just the, you know, the index into this table, the offset. And then now we have 500, 500,000 constants, like the count, the total number of them, not the size of them, uh, which would be enough. I think in, at least for, for the majority of cases where you could just say, Hey, the, uh, each of these things has both an offset and a, uh, a size component and the size might be imaginary, but, um, that, that would be enough. The challenge with that though, is that, you know, you'll, you'll have, well, again, a lot of direction. Yeah. Fun, fun, uh, fun challenge is constants are not important to implement now. So I got a punt on that, but it was just something I started thinking about. Okay. So, uh, that's that's the end of this. Try try this out if you want to, um, and uh, check back for the next part a little bit later. See ya.